Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabub.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I am an independent demonstrator in the United States. So today I am super excited because I have a very fun technique to share with you. This is going to be part of the Totally Techniques blog hop. Now the Totally Techniques design team is demonstrators all over the country, Stampin' Up! demonstrators, and we are featuring different techniques with our alcohol blends or our stamp and blend markers. I have a doozy for you today. I think it's gonna be a real aha moment and I can't wait to hear about the cards you're gonna make using this technique. Now, at the end of the video, there's going to be a link in the top corner and that is going to take you to my blog for this particular post you're gonna scroll down until you see a bunch of little thumbnails or something that says um, LinkedIn here or something like that. When you click on that, it's going to take you to the other blogs that are involved in this blog hop. I can't hardly wait to see what everybody has made with the stamp and blend alcohol markers. Let's flip the camera around and we'll get started. I was super excited about this um, blog hop because I love working with our alcohol blend markers. I love that we have a thin end for a little bit more detailed coloring and then we also have a thick brush end for the bigger areas. Now, there's a lot of cool things you can do with alcohol markers and I was doing a little research to figure out what technique did I wanna share with you today. And I decided to go back to something that I haven't done in years, and that is using the alcohol blends, the alcohol stamp and blends on photographs. Did you know you can do that? So years ago, I um, took some photographs and I found some photographs online or pictures, and I print them out at my local Walgreens and I get them made into black and white. So what I've got here is this pretty floral with the birdhouse. I've got a waterfall. This is a picture that I took. I found this online, a jar with some wildflowers in it. This is a picture that I took from one of my trips of a beach walkway down to the beach. And then I found this picture online of this white hummingbird. So we're going to do a little coloring on these photographs. And because these are alcohol markers, the color will dry on a photograph and it's very, very muted. I wrote on the back of these so I could remember which colors I wanted to use with what. So I'm going to go through and color. This is the uh, Fresh Freesia Dark Marker. And I'm going to color these white, and I wanna say these are hydrangeas. And I'm pretty sure they are, but I know that I love them. Um, where was I recently where there was a huge hydrangea bush? Gosh, it was just like yesterday or the day before and I commented and said, wow, look at that bush. I can't remember. If I think of it, I'll let you know. <laughs> Not that it matters, but look at how fun that is that you can color on these. Now, it's been a long time since I've done this. So I see that I have some little streaks and what I'm remembering from doing this is you don't want to over color. So I'm just gonna take a tissue and dab some of that off. And this may be hard to see in the um, camera. So hang on, I'll pick it up in just a minute. Where is my, here's my piercing mat. I'm gonna bring that in so I'm not coloring on my work surface here. This is a piercing mat. I just cover it with printer weight paper, tape it on here, and this is what I like to use on my desktop surface so that I don't stamp all over my table. Okay, now you can really see that color coming in there. Isn't that pretty? I'm gonna do a little bit more up here, and then I'll color this one in. And I like to do this just kind of to highlight something in my photograph. I could color the birdhouse, but I don't want to. I just want this to be a little bit. So I'm going to leave it right there. And I just, I absolutely love this. I think it's so pretty. 
And I'm going to go through and add some color to these other photographs so you can kind of get a feel for what I'm doing here. And then we're going to make up one of these cards and then I will show you my ideas with the rest of the cards. So you're not going to make watch me make five cards today, but I am going to show them to you so you can see them. Now, this is Granny Apple Dark. And I'm just coming in here and coloring some of this foliage. And I think that's gonna add a neat pop of color here. And I'm gonna come in with the Tahitian Tide. This is the light Tahitian Tide. And I was thinking we could add just a little bit of blue to the waterfall. And this is fun. We were just up in um, Upper Michigan which is a peninsula right above Wisconsin. And we actually got to see some waterfalls up there. It's a beautiful area just last week, so that's cool. Okay, so there's just a little bit of blue and a little bit of green added right down here. I think that looks great. Set that aside. I'm going to bring in my beach scene and I'm going to add the Tahitian, let me see, let me make sure. Yep, I'm gonna add the Tahitian blue right down here to the water. Yeah, if I remember this technique correctly, this is the first time I'm doing it in a very, very long time. You don't want, whoops, I didn't wanna put that on there. Oh, look, I just wiped it off. I didn't know I could do that. That's the sand. But you don't want to over color on this, okay? Because you'll pull the color off and you'll make streak lines. So just give it a good, quick, color with your marker. Again, that was the uh, light Tahitian Tide, so we've just got that little bit of blue in there. I set that one aside. I thought with this pretty one, um, I'm just going to come in and color the centers of my wildflowers yellow. And then you'll see why I chose these colors. I've got, hang on, I just made a little mistake there. Look at that, you can wipe it right off if you catch it soon enough. Okay, that looks great too. Just some pretty yellow centers, that little pop of color. And now for my bird. Let's see, I decided to use Flirty Flamingo here. Oh, by the way, this was dark Daffodil Delight. This is dark Flirty Flamingo. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color these flowers. I wish they were a little bit whiter, but they're not. And I'm gonna be okay with that. There's one that's a little bit whiter. Just gonna add that little bit of pink right there. I could color green on my leaf, but I think I just wanna end it right there. You don't wanna overdo this. So now we have five photos that we have altered with the alcohol markers. Each one, just a little bit of color. So I am going to, I'm gonna do this one for you and then I'll show you what I'm doing with the rest of them. I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and I'm going to bring in my layers of cardstock. So I have a fresh freesia, that's the color we use to color the flowers, a fresh freesia card base. This is five and a half by eight and a half. And let me get all these bits out of here. I'm gonna score this at four and a quarter. And we're going to fold that and burnish that edge good. I've got a scrap of the fresh freesia and then I've got two white pieces. Um, these are both four by five and a quarter and an envelope. So let me grab my embossing folder. So I didn't use any designer paper to decorate my envelope. I'm not really using any images of stamps to decorate my envelope. And you guys know, if you follow me, that I love a decorated envelope. So I pulled out the Elegant Eucalyptus 3D Embossing Folders. These are a couple of our mini folders. You get two of them in the pack. This one is a floral spray that looks just like that. And this one is some hanging vines or eucalyptus that looks just like this. And I thought one of these would be super pretty with my floral birdhouse card. So what I am going to do is I'm going to emboss the flap of my envelope. If I can get this open. 
Okay, you want to make sure that you are, um, it's going to emboss on the front of the embossing folder. I did one earlier today and I embossed it like this and then it was debossed or sunken in. You wanna make sure that when you do this, you have your Stampin' Up! emblem showing right there. And I'm going to push this into my embossing folder right up to the fold line on my envelope. And I will bring my machine over so you can see exactly how I do this. You're gonna pull out all your plates except your number one platform, and then we're going to bring in our number four, which is for the 3D embossing folders. This fits perfectly in here, but you wanna be careful and be mindful that your embossing folder is not sticking out on either side here because when you roll this through, this machine is very powerful and it will mangle the edges of your folder. So just make sure it stays right in the middle. And are you ready? Look at how very pretty that is. That's just something really elegant you can do to your envelope flaps. Okay, we need to trim this photograph down and I've got a piece of four by five and a quarter white. So I need this to be a little bit smaller than that. So I'm going to go with uh, five and an eighth. We're gonna start there. And I need to trim off one of the sides here to three and seven eighths. So I think I'll do this one right here. And I'm going to add my photograph that I colored to this white layer. I just wanted a little pop of white behind here. That looks really good. I'm going to add my Stamp and Seal Plus. I like Stamp and Seal Plus. And especially when I'm using photographs because the back is kind of um, a non-porous, slippery texture. And if you get too much glue on the back, it will make like the worm paths. You know what I mean? Like bumps. And that's just not attractive. Okay, there we go. So we've got that on there. We're going to take that and put it right on the front of our card. And now we can use our liquid glue. This is my favorite adhesive. I'm gonna put that right on here. Now, I decided to make these cards for my mom because my mom, whoops, that slid on me. My mom is in need of get well and sympathy cards. And you guys know that when you get to a certain age, you need a lot of those kind of cards. So I brought in some sentiment sets. I've got, these were laying on my desk. This is Inspired Thoughts. It has a sympathy, sending healing thoughts your way. I just like this one. Another really nice saying is sheltering you with love at a time when words fall short. Next, we have a Season of Chic. This was just laying on my desk, and I like the thinking of you down here. And then I sought out a Get Well Soon. This says Feel Better Real Soon. This is the Cottage Rose set. So I'm going to bring in my stamps and my Memento Black Ink Pad. And let's see. How about a sympathy card? This just looks like a good sympathy card. It's very serene and pretty. We're going to stamp that. And then in case I don't like that, I'm going to stamp the thinking of you. And this is just a fresh freesia scrap. And where'd my lid go? Right here. We're gonna close that up. Hang on while I wash my hands off. I got black ink on my hands and thank goodness I saw it before I wrecked my card. So, <laughs> whew. Okay, now I'm gonna bring in the Stylish Shapes dies. I have been using these like crazy, you guys. If you don't have these yet, they're fabulous. You have four different banners, five different squares. They're all stitched around the edge. And then we also have one, two, three, four, five, six circles. Was that five? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, five squares. And so I am going to take this particular banner 
and I'm gonna die cut that. I'm going to take this little longer banner and die cut this. Now, when I stamp and then add my dies to die cut, I like to kind of hold things down with a piece of temporary tape or washi tape works fine if you have some of that. That way you won't have to worry about this moving when you put it into your machine. I'm also going to take a little scrap of white and I'm going to die cut another banner without stamping in it. So hang tight while I get this done. I'll be right back. Okay, here comes our banners. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use, so I decided to make two and then we can figure it out as we go along. It's back over here and here's that white one. All right. Now, do I wanna take this and cut this edge off and set this right over here? Or do I want to take this one and add it to the white one here, just for a little extra something, and put it right down here? And I think that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to add a little glue, and we're gonna put that, and if you wanted to, you could cut this banner, the white banner in the middle, and spread it out to make it longer but I think I like this size just the way it is, but that's an idea. Make sure this is straight. And if you wanted to really personalize this, you could make up a bunch of different sayings and not mount these, but put them together and put the dimensionals on the back and give that as a gift with a whole bunch of different sayings so that your um, recipient, I'm giving this as a gift, would be able to use whatever sentiment they need. So that's another idea. Got my take your pick tool to pop the backings off and I'm going to just bring this right down here. Make sure I get it straight. Oh my gosh, you guys, isn't that so very pretty? Is that straight? I don't think it is. Hang on. Oh, that sticks really good on that photograph. There we go, now I have it straight. And then I'm gonna bring in some of our iridescent rhinestones. These are so pretty, they're my absolute favorite. And I think these will just look pretty any place I put them on my card. Look at that. Just to add a, I think I'm gonna do just a couple more, cause why not? My mom likes bling. <laughs> There we go, lots of bling on there, isn't that pretty? And then we have this beautiful envelope flap. Ah, I love this, love this, love this. Now, I have all of these other photos and I am going to go ahead and cut these up. I've got layers already out here ready to go. I've got a petal pink with a gingham embossing folder. This particular embossing folder, I've already done the envelope. I also have a flirty flamingo ready to go and I used the pretty flowers embossing folder on this one. the Tahitian Tide, and a Daffodil Delight. So I'm going to cut my photos. I'm going to put all these cards together. I'm gonna to bring you back when I've done that and let you see all the pretty that I'm about to make. Hang tight. Okay, you guys, I forgot to show you one thing. I've got all the cards ready to share with you, but this was a piece that I cut off the bottom of this photo, and I am actually going to add this. Just put a little bit of glue on there. I'm gonna add this right to the bottom of my inside layer. This was the only photo that I could do that where it looked like something because you can clearly see those are leaves. I thought that would be really cool for the inside of this card. It was kind of an afterthought. Don't you love it when those thoughts come to you while you're doing stuff? Yeah. Look at how cool that is. Okay, so here is our fresh 
freesia with the eucalyptus embossing folder on our envelope. Then we have our petal pink. And here I kind of pushed my banner over here and cut it off and put the black behind it. That is mounted on dimensionals and a few um, iridescent rhinestones. I used the gingham embossing folder on that envelope. Here comes the flirty flamingo. I used the pretty flowers embossing folder and I used a circle with the white banner behind it. Some iridescent rhinestones. Here comes the Tahitian Tide card base. And here's that envelope that I did the embossing on the wrong side, but nobody's gonna know, so I'm still gonna use it. And I, again, used the banner with the banner behind it. That's our new in color Tahitian Tide. And then we have this beauty with the gingham embossing folder. I did the circle with the black banner behind it. I put three little rhinestones in here and colored the middles on here yellow. Now, I wanted to share with you, in our current catalog, you will find stamp and blend markers at the bottom of every one of our color families. And if there's an item code here, that means there is a marker available. We don't have them in Mango Melody or Coastal Cabana or Pacific Point Gorgeous Grape. So that's what that dash means right there. Now, when you order the Stampin' Blend markers, you get two in a package. They are $9 total, and one is a light color and one is a dark color. If you do not have the current catalogs and you're in the United States, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is right here and I would be happy to send these to you. We have a big annual catalog. We currently have a holiday mini catalog. So just let me know, send me your address if you're in the United States. And now as far as stamp and blend alcohol markers go, the best time to buy these is before the end of August, and that is just a few days away. So um, when you order $50 worth of product, you get to choose anything out of the Celebration brochure, and it will pop up online when you're placing orders also. We have so many great things in here available to you, and Stampin' Up! has the more to celebrate. So you can get these items free on top of these. With each $50, you get to choose a free item. Some of them are valued at $100. So when your order hits $100, you can choose the ones that say 100. Now I wanted to mention to you, when you're placing orders with me, this is my current monthly host code, please use that if your order's under $150. If it's over $150, don't use it. You're gonna get some rewards from Stampin' Up! and I definitely want you to have those. This host code may change, and you can find that anytime in the right-hand column of my blog or at the end of the post that I'm going to put about these pictures. You want to click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. Please make sure you click up here to head to my blog post. You're going to find a free download for these projects with the dimensions, the colors, pictures. You can print it out or you can save it to your device so you have good instructions. Also a link back to this video. And the Totally Techniques design team blog hop, which features all different techniques with the stamp and blend markers. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give this a try. Get yourself some photographs, print them out in black and white, color them with the stamp and blend alcohol markers. I would love it if you would send me pictures of what you're making. I always love to see that. And most of all, I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.